Josh Stern was unable to do that, and it became quite clear that uh, he had nothing to hang his hat on. Um, nonetheless, the judge, uh, he, the judge actually even stated, I believe um, that I do have this authority, and I'm very confident in my authority, but, but since you've raised, raised the concerns, I'm going to hold off on to, and issuing such orders until on Monday at 8.30 a.m., at which time I will be in, in Humboldt County. Um, so from all indications that we have, we, we will have an order to show cause for both preliminary injunction and contempt, but at this point we have yet another series of delays. Did Pacific Member bring up any other concerns besides the fact that the hearing was in Mendocino County? They brought some other concerns uh, previous to that. They basically argued uh, why they don't that there are timber harvest plans that have already been approved why they apply to the stay and uh, basically trying to, to give their interpretation of the, of the order um, that does not uh, include such, such large plans uh, under the order. And they also were claiming that their timber harvest plans did not rely on the permits that are being challenged in the case, uh, meaning the sustained yield plan and the incidental take permits to kill endangered species and the ownership life and it's, it's just a complete fallacy because uh, each and every one of these timber harvest plans wholly re relies on one or all of these permits. And in fact, if you request an administrative record of any of these timber harvest plans, then they're not only going to give you a copy of the timber harvest plan and city, the California Department of Forestry's official response um, and other documents related to that, but they're also going to give you the sustained yield plan, the incidental take permits, and so forth because they are so integrally uh, related. And so they really don't have a, a, an argument there, but uh, it was uh, a concern to the judge, and he did ask for additional evidence uh, to show that, indeed, each one of their 134 timber harvest plants that are active right now, that each of one of those do, in fact, rely on these permits in question. Would it be difficult to provide that kind of proof for the judge? Not at all. And in fact, we have already provided a declaration from one of our staff members that, that shows uh, it, it has examples of more than 30 different timber harvest plants uh, that show uh, exactly how they relate and rely to the sustained yield plan, etc. Um, and so we provided different pages of the timber harvest plan and the official responses from CDF that clearly show that they do rely on these permits. So we're confident that, um, that we, we will have no, absolutely no problem at all in providing that evidence to the judge, but it's just a shame that um, something that is um, such a, you know, should be such a non-issue um, is holding us up even further. Because, you know, Pacific Lumber has even acknowledged in their court filings that, um, that their timber harvest plans do rely on the FYP um, when that benefits their argument. But then um, when it seems like it's, it's going to be to the detriment of their argument, Now, Alicia, this is the first time you've sat in on this particular issue. What what did it seem like to you? Well, that's exactly what I wanted to pipe up about, was that I haven't been coming to these hearings, and I've been obviously involved in a different legal venue in federal court. Um, and my biggest impression, it was a very unconventional legal proceeding because um, we were in this tiny little room. It, the judge was sitting there in a sweater and slacks. He didn't have a robe on. He actually was sitting in a chair next to people. There were two tables, and um, ethics lawyers were at one table, and then CDF, Pacific Lumber, and Department of Fish and Game had attorneys at the other table. Um, Cynthia and another woman from Epic were the only other people allowed in. Besides me, somehow I slipped in there, 
about to, to find any consensus. It's a very long and arduous process. Pacific Lumber sat there and argued that, you know, that, that none of these things could happen. They couldn't have a pre preliminary injunction because of all the jobs that would be lost and all the millions of dollars that would be lost. Well, I'm sitting there thinking about, you know, every dollar that he's talking about is, is a tree, is part of a forest, is a living ecosystem. And the language that they're using and the, the circular reasoning that they're using, my favorite one is when um, Epic Attorney Sharon Duggan said, you know, first of all, they're telling you that they, they don't know what the judge's order even means. And in the next breath, they're telling you how the judge's order is going to impact them in all of these horrible ways. So which, which is it? Do they understand it? going to impact them horribly, or do they not know what it means? I mean, this is, and it just kept going like that. At the moment when um, the PL raised their bogus claim about uh, the judge not having authority because he was in Mendocino and not humble, the judge literally said, well, what, you know, what is the authority here? Do you, do you have any law? And he said, well, actually, Your Honor, I'm speaking from ignorance. That ignorance is my only authority here, you know, and the judge still took it. The judge, I couldn't believe how much the judge was just willing to um, to basically play along with Pacific Lumber and, and California Department of Forestry in this just totally illogical thing. What's your estimation now, uh, either Cynthia or Alicia, on uh, whether or not the next time the, uh, the hearing goes forward, that's on 8, 8.30 on Monday, uh, this contempt order will come down? Well, it seems pretty obvious that the judge is going to sign an order to show cause both for, for, a, for a preliminary injunction and for contempt, but that just means that he's scheduling a preliminary injunction hearing um, and setting up a schedule by which each side is going to submit their arguments. Um, and, and he did set, and he did say he was going to set that preliminary injunction hearing for the 9th of December. So, you know, I think the, the most important thing is that Pacific Lumber is logging over a million board feet a day out of these forests. They're operating on, um, you know, in what Epic and, and, you know, it seems pretty clear, is in contempt of the judge's stay. Um, so they're thinking about, about a million board feet a day, right? Every day that the, the PL can delay this is a million more board feet. So putting it off until Monday, four million more board feet, right? Putting off this hearing until the 9th um, is another week and a half, two weeks of logging that's going to happen out there. Now, one interesting thing that came up after the hearing sort of talking about it was that w when it comes down to Pacific Lumber being found in contempt of the judge's order, if that happens, they may be liable for every day of logging. There may be severe penalties for every day that this logging continues um, in defiance of the judge's ruling. So this is a, they're not really in a good place, you know, as far as what their risks of liability are. They could have to pay back this million board feet worth of profit that they're making a day, plus penalties. So, and, the, and I have to say, it wasn't really clear, other than um, what the judge was, seemed to be taking this outrageous behavior from Pacific Lumber, but it also, didn't, it, it seems kind of like he was considering, um, really considering holding them in contempt, and really considering putting into place a, a preliminary injunction. So, uh, it remains to be seen. And that was Alicia Littletree also. We spoke with uh, Cynthia Elkins of Epic. Now, the Pacific Lumber Company told KMUD News on this Thursday that they're not going to have any comment on this issue until after the contempt hearing on the 9th of December, and that's three weeks away. And uh, KMUD News learned that a number of freshwater and Elk River residents were quite upset because they were not allowed into the hearing in Ukiah. We will, of course, keep you posted. Speaking of keeping you posted, Sue Maloney has been holding a hunger uh, strike for the old growth trees now, and she's in day number 39 in Sacramento. She told K Mud News she's still very mentally clear, mentally very clear, excuse me, but the normally slim woman is looking quite caught now. And